Good evening, all. I'm Rapstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap-up. And this wrap-up is for Thursday. We're at the 10th of June, 2021, just around 525 in the afternoon. I've already sent the new invites out for the next live webinar called What's Up? And that's going to be on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. Central Time. We fill up on seats like that. So you may well want to go there. I get people, well, Ira, I couldn't help. I didn't come. Could you do this? Folks, you either come or you don't come. These webinars are not going to be recorded for the website. We record them for ourselves, uh, for our track records. Not track record, but for the NFA record. That's what I meant to say. So we, we know what we said, and there's proof of that. But... When the, the regulators, other than that, no, I don't want to do that. I have too much fun when you're live with me on it. And, you know, I listened to all the comments. One of the common comments we had on it was, hey, you should have the charts ready to go. Well, how? There are God knows how many futures contracts, and then how many thousands of stock CTF spiders are there? There's no way. What I do is I have to throw in the symbol and then create it. I love that you said that. I can bring the chart up without any indicator, one, two, three, the way they do on all the financial shows. But don't you want to see the moving averages, where the Bollinger Bands are, maybe window envelopes every now and then? That's why I do it the way I do. Again, they're only 15 to 20 minutes long. I've got my timer and I just stop. I tell you, hey, we're done for today. So I'm gonna go with them. We're experimenting. We've done one now on a Wednesday. We've got a Thursday. Now we'll have a Tuesday and we'll figure out how many we wanna do per week. But I wanna do them every week when I'm in Chicago. And it is summer. At some point I'm gonna take a trip. Okay, the very next thing. What was today? CPI day. And what kind of number came out was 5% CPI. Sounds high. If that's the case, if you look at the notes, why did the market go down and crack under 143? It's because it's a sweetheart number the way the jobs data number was. These are not numbers that get the Fed to make a move. They're not strong enough. Nothing's running that hot. These are improvement numbers, and you're walking your way there. If you looked at the jobless claims, they're falling, but not at a huge pace. That's to be expected. Today is the first day that in many states, the $300 a week government benefits, not state government, but the government benefits end. Done deal. Over. That extra 300 bucks. People are going to look for work. I went out last night to one of my friend's uh, restaurant. He's a major chain in Chicago, uh, one of the big boys. And they have them all through the city, plus they're in uh, some of the other states. He runs normally 2,300 employees, and it's a top, top steakhouse. Trying to get in Chicago, you're going to have to wait a couple weeks to get in. Uh, outdoor, indoor, it's gorgeous. And there's my friend, the owner. He's normally not there. And I go, hey, what's going on? We're talking. He goes, I got to tell you. He said, we had 2,300 people with the pandemic. We had to cut our force. We went down to 1,300. He said, we stayed open. You know how rough it was because you eat here all the time. And I said, yep. Yeah. And he goes, I need another 500 people today. We've done everything to get people raise rates, everything they just don't want to work right now, not yet. We talked about the government thing. All I could say is I hope I need the 500 people. That's not one person, folks. Listen to what I just said. Fascinating. All right, so we're looking at energy still fairly good. Bitcoin sitting here today. I made the first trade recommendation in my written update today in Bitcoin and in my morning video. I'm proud of myself. I've been waiting to do one. I won't tell you how it did if you're not a paid subscriber or how it's doing. Uh, pretty flat in everything here and getting a bit of a bid in the metals. Well, you know why? Because there's no interest rate pressure on them. That's important. When you look at the S&P, I don't know. The sell may go away, boys, might be in trouble because you're getting up here to all-time high closes. Tomorrow's the last day of this week. We'll see what happens. And here you, you took that out. So the sell may go away. Did you hear one person on financial TV say, well, so much for that axiom? <laughs> well, up, up you are there. Remember, they'll lead up to it because it's good, press sounds, and then you back away. But it's just as good when it doesn't work, and I was surprised that they didn't say anything. Uh, you could drop here now. 
then you still can't say you took out those May highs. So you got higher lows, higher highs, you're in an uptrend in the market. As I look at the moving average, you're over it, so we have the bias up. Why? When price is over the 18-day average of close, the bias is up. What am I looking at then? Well, I see higher lows, higher highs. The resistance should be the 4265.50 level, the upper Bollinger Band, and you still have a fully embedded reading, which tells me until this disappears with the red number under 80, that the odds are the market wants to work to that higher number. Now, in all fairness, we're going very much sideways. This could be one of these times now where the summer has set in earlier like the weather. We're at 90 degrees in Chicago right now. It's only June 10th. That's way hotter than we normally are. But that's where you're at on these markets, so you do pay attention to that. By the way, I want to thank many of you that showed up yesterday at our live webinar. What fun that was. Uh, it went just the way that I wanted. I sent out the new invite if you're on my mailing list. You should have got that this afternoon. I would sign up for it if you're coming because the seats, we're running out of seats. It's that simple. We only have so many in these live webinars. I'm not expanding it. This is it. You sign up, you don't show up, I block you, you go on a blacklist. So if you're going to sign up, you better be there. I give you a couple of times to miss when you sign up, and then after that, I will block you. So you'll think you've got signed up, and then you'll try to get in, you'll find you can't. And I'm never going to post them. I just love the fact that it's live. I can't, if, if I post them, then you don't show up. And if you show up, it makes it so much more fun for me. I'm an educator. I love doing that, and I'm a broker. I love teaching you what I know. Okay, in the NASDAQ. So if we take a look at today's action, pretty interesting. You're up to 13,976.50. The resistance is 14,090. And as you can see, the trend is up. The bias is up. You have an embedded reading. Still looks pretty bullish to me. The Dow Jones is the weak one. This market is now running out of steam. It's just going sideways, not trending either. Higher high, lower and low. In the Russell, today was the day where I think it's got to make its stands right now. Why? It's losing the embedded reading. Let me show you how it looked on the close. You hadn't lost it. Don't get what my good friend Ron calls stochasticitis. You don't look at every movement and say, oh, it's losing it. I got to get out right now. Give the market time. But if that red number is under 79 on the close, yeah, I, I think you got to come out and just say, get out. The momentum is lost in the market. I'll take another look at it another day. You can get it back on Monday, but you still got to come out if that happens. That's the way I teach it, at least. So then we get to the VIX cash. You tell me the number the market ran at the resistance. How often do you hear me say to you, the red line, which is the 18-day moving average of closes, is the line in the sand. That is the number the market's going to have trouble with. If you have a big break, it's the number it likes to go to. If you have a big rally, it's the number it likes to fall back to. Is it every time? No. It can slice through it, but more times than not, by a lot, that's the areas the market's going to fight the battle at. And that's where you're at. So what did the market do? Sort of a failure. Uh, it had lost, and let's take a look at this. Here's a market that's fully embedded because both numbers that make up the slow stochastic have for several days been uh, trading under 20. You lose that yesterday. That's just what I'm talking about on the Russell, which had a bullish embedded reading. This is a bearish one. You can only get it back the next day. So if today the numbers get back under the 20 level, you're back into the bear trend off of that until it's lost again. Does that make sense? I hope so. It's what I call don't get stochasticitis. Would I have told traders yesterday, by the way, to come out in, the, uh, in that number? Absolutely. That was more than just a little bit over. Don't care. Don't care what you leave on the table. The money's been made or the loss has been had. It's one of the two. In the uh, T-bond market, so you're fighting to stay over the upper Bollinger Band. Now, let me tell you, when you get consecutive closes over that number, it's like pulling a rubber band that's inevitably going to snap on you. Why? It's an algorithm that's designed so that the market won't stay more than 5% of the time over it. Now, arguments happen amongst the advocates of this as to what comprises that 5% of the time. I came up with a rule of thumb. 
I count each consecutive close over that number. The word is over that number. This was not, but over it is one of those days. There's one, there's another. There's another element that happened here. You close in the top quadrant each day of the market when it's over it and a higher close each day. So until you come back under this low at 154.3, the market is saying, hey, it's more than just a fluke. There's something else going on to the upside. I pay attention to that. Could today be the third day over? Yes. And my rule of thumb is this as I started. I count each consecutive day as taking away one of those percentage points. So you lost one there, so you had a 4% chance today of staying over the upper band. Now tomorrow you got a 3% chance. Two, one, and zero. Go back and count and find out where that happened on these charts and you're going to go, oh, he, he's on to something. I think you'll say that. In the 10-year note, are we broken out of the upside? Yeah. It's another one of these moves that is uh, just moving away, another breakout. You had an outside day to the upside today, a uh, sign that the market would be in trouble, would be taking out today's low of 132.10. That would probably drop you right back to that 18-day average of 131.29. But to me, what's important is are we embedding? So both numbers were not over 80 on Tuesday. They were yesterday. They are on Thursday's close, and now we're already into Friday and they're still there. You gotta prove that you can stay up and do that, but that's another sign of strength if it can do that. In the dollar index, the psychiatry trade is at work. You're just bouncing around this 18-day average. The Bollinger Bands, instead of being big and broad, have narrowed in and that often leads to a churn. I just, I teach people to stay away from that. And the same things happen, just the flip side of it in the euro currency, as you can see dropping down. British pound, you went down to the Bollinger Band today. You hadn't been there. What do I teach you? The first time you hit it is where as a pro, and that's what I think other pros do, they'll have orders waiting there and they want to cover their short position because you're not going to stay out of that band more than 5% of the time. Here's what the market did, and then right back up, and you can see where you're at. You may not believe that, and I get it, but I know what I like. Bitcoin, look at where the market failed today against that 18-day average of closes. Now, will there be any legs to this break is going to be the big question. If it gets through the high you have here, there won't be. If the market starts down through today's low, you have a good shot to go to back to 33,274. You have already corrected an over what? An oversold condition, and now you need momentum to turn down, which would happen if prices began that break. You know, I teach these theories in a lot more detail in my charting course. This charting course is the core of the way that I teach charting, and now I've begun adding enhanced courses to it. But the basic of the course starts you with the swing line. Why is it important? How do you draw it by hand? I'm gonna make you draw it in the videos by hand. You get charting software from me that goes back to the exact date of the ones I'm using. On many of the charts you'll see, you won't know the market. I cover the name of the market, black it out, values, and so on. I want you to learn charting. What is a window envelope? How do you plot it? What is the purpose? 54 videos, eight hours of videos. See what I do, you do the same. I teach by making sure you understand that chapter before you go to the next one. If you make it a race, you won't learn. If you walk through it and do what I say, make sure before you go to the next chapter, you understood everything right there in that one, you won't even need a review. You're gonna have it down and you're gonna go, I get it. Now to reinstill every day that, I'm gonna give you 30 days access to all my research. So at 5.40 in the morning, I put out my morning futures video. And in that video, what I end up doing is I will teach you from that video how to plot here, how to plot there, and reinstill everything that you just learned in all those videos. After that, if you want to become a subscriber, that's up to you. If you think you've had enough, fine. Here's what I've learned. People that think they got it and they don't need it, they're the losers. Why? All of us need to keep on that straight and true road. It's that simple.
How do you find out more? Go to our website, 866, well, if you can call my staff at 866. The website is www.iraepstein.com. And when you get there, go to education. I've made some short videos. I explain how it all works for you. And it is not expensive. It's a great gift for graduation to somebody as well. And you don't have to start it the day you buy it. We start for you when we're told, be either by the gift that you've given, they'll tell us when they want to start the course, and that's when everything will start for them with the charting software, the access to the research, and so on. I'm Ira Epstein. Good day.